Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're playing TF Swain. So this deck is notor notoriously a control deck that's based off of the combo with Swain and the Leviathan. The Leviathan is Swain's ship, basically. There's a series of cards that can draw their champion and do something. And Swain's is by far the most powerful. Being able to deal three to the enemy nexus each turn start. With Swain being leveled up and all, it just means you get to stun three of your opponent's units and win the game. So here we have a pretty nice opener. I should have kept Scorched Earth, though. That was one mistake I made because he is playing the Wellspring deck. That's how he wins. Why didn't I keep the card that stops him from winning? I don't know. But uh, we'll get on that in the video because that does actually matter quite a bit later on. Um, we're playing cards like Petty Officer and other cards that can make either fill up our board very wide. We're also playing the Spider um, to give us some flexibility in blocking. Or we play cards that can make kegs in order to get our cards to deal one extra damage making cards like death hand able to kill things with three health which can matter in most and actually a lot of cases um even here we can end up killing the 2-2 with our make it rain which now will deal two to everything um and uh tf is really important here although we have less card draw we're playing less card draw for him we can sometimes get nuts hands where we can just level him up out of nowhere um most cases, he's either going to die before that can happen, or we're just not going to go for it because we're trying to go for the Swain level up with the Leviathan. And TF then is just a stun, a draw, or just a board wipe with a keg. Being able to do two to everything is pretty actually powerful. It's like a make rain, but better. So here we're going to play Petty Officer into the Powder Keg, making make it rain, making a TF next turn, making a Death Hand really good. And he's going to play the Shepherd. Really interesting card. Um, that actually survives a long time in this game. It's kind of fun, ridiculous and funny. Um, but you'll see that in a second. So, um, DF is a great flexible card. He's a 4 mana 2-2 two, two that can just draw us into more removal. Can be a removal piece and is just really flexible. So here we're going to make it rain in order to kill the Krusty Krasher while we can. We will be giving the Star Shepherd value with its own heal ability. But the Krusty Krasher is already going to do that. And now we can flexibly kill the O2 with TF if we have to next turn. So I think here um I open attack. I feel like open attacking is the best play. If he blocks and then play something I can TF for little commitment. Seems really powerful. I'm tapping this death hand for no reason. By the way, this guy's this is a recording guy, so I don't actually remember this game all that well. I remember that it was pretty interesting and funny, so um, but clearly I don't remember what I did. Um, here he could play uh, Soraka, though that'd be a turn late. He could play Tom Kench. Um, wouldn't be too bad with Tom Kench. We would have to kill it this turn because we can't let a Tom Kench live. Um, that would be a ridiculous amount of value for him. He could kill our TF pretty easily. Um, we just can't let that happen. Um, one thing I didn't think about when playing this game, guys, and this you, you should think about whenever you're playing against Tom Kench, is that your opponent... It's, it's your opponent can when they when they steal some of the Tom Kench if you kill the Tom Kench you get it back um, I do decide to go for a really interesting play here um, I think I twisted fate his Tom Kench no okay so I'm gonna try to kill the Tom Kench this turn um, I could potentially I don't know there's a lot of options I think TF gold card to deal two to the Tom Kench um, Making it within Ravenous Falk range this turn, meaning I can kill it this turn if he doesn't have a heal. If he does have a heal, then I can kill it next turn with the, death, the three death hands in my hand. So, um, and even if he does heal, it still dies to trying to steal TF. So that was probably the most flexible play and pretty good. He is going to get a 4-3 here. Pretty, pretty good, but I do have a 3-1, so it's not like he's going to get any decent blocks. I could... I'm probably going to go for the th the um, the one drop here um, because it's just it's just the most value, especially with my, the deck my opponent's playing. I'm going to need some board space, and I have lots of removal in hand. Death Hand isn't going to kill very much. I'm going to keep it. I'm just going to let him attack here um, first, of course. There's no reason not to. Um, if I get a good one drop or something, I'd... Don't really want him killing that over the TF. I'd rather TF die here, actually. He should he should have killed the 3-1, the I think. 
Um, this is what let his 4 3 attack with. Um, yeah, yeah, it would just let that attack, and he could have gone 4 3, th 4 damage in for no cost, and that would have been pretty powerful for him. Alright, Sorok is gonna be nice for him here. He doesn't have anything damaged yet. So while, yes, it's great, it's not going to be getting any value yet. We just drop that zap down immediately. Not even thinking twice about it, just knowing that, w w I mean, we need the card draw. Well, look at our hands. He has four, and we have five, and we have three units on board, and he only has two. Although, one Soraka, so we're going to have to kill that Soraka pretty soon, or she's going to be able to get card draw, card draw, card draw, and we're going to lose the game. Uh, the Leviathan is the perfect draw here. We're just going to need to close out this game. Um... Interesting. We could try to remove Soraka here. I feel like we should we should maybe try. We could also wait. Um, um she's not she's not close enough to leveling up to be that worrisome, and we don't really need his Nexus to be super low. Although the lower the better, right? Um interesting draw. We're probably gonna just drop that down. It gives us a lot of flexibility with cards like Ravenous Flock being able to deal over the top on Soraka, finishing her off even though he might have heal. That's gonna be really important. Um and just the general idea of this deck is to get out the Leviathan and Swain. And so if we can get that out, we kind of win. I don't know how our opponent deals with that. So here they're obviously going to have something to save the goat with, the, the goat shepherd thing with. Um, whatever they do, it's a wasted, it's a waste really, because it's just going to have, what? Uh, they can't heal it. I guess, um, alright, Bastion would work. Bastion has been just wasted. They could have used that on Soraka. So either that's telling that they have another removal spell, or don't think we could kill Soraka, and obviously we can kill Soraka. So they have another protection spell. Now, given that Soraka is going to level up on the end of the step anyway, and we really need to kill Soraka, and we have the Leviathan next turn, I don't think we can afford to play around anything. Now, I thought about Ravenous Flocking first, because I want to be able to play Ravenous Flock um, and just kill it even if he has a heal, um, but when I thought about it, I realized that he already has told that he told us he has a protective spell. So why waste the Ravenous Flock, which is a super powerful card, and why not try to draw out the removal spell? Or the protection spell. This is actually the perfect protection spell. Heals her up to full and gives her four extra health. So she goes up to 11. 11 is basically untouchable. And due to that... And by the way, that's one of the Soraka's huge strengths. We could technically kill Soraka next turn, but we want to play the Leviathan, right? And I mean, we could double Death's Hand into Ravenous, and we'd be in a decent position there. But I'd rather Leviathan and make sure. Oh, another Leviathan. We, that's insane. That's a really interesting draw. Um, I want to be able to Leviathan here so that we can stop his attack, not next turn, but the turn after that. Um, which will actually be our attack step so we can get in a pretty good attack. I feel like the most important thing here is dealing damage. And we can survive against his deck for a while here. So the quicker we can kill him, the better. And our two elusives are just in a, uh, are just attesting to that. Three free damage each turn when the... the the uh, that whatever that card's called, the the protector dude can only heal three each turn. Now he's gonna get go up back up to full, so that's an infinite heal potentially. We can not kill him this turn if we wanted to with Raven's flock. Um, that's something I probably should consider because it's a it's a really powerful move and we need him to stop gaining life if we're gonna win with the Leviathan quick enough. Um, given that he has a lot of Starkas card draw, and here, um, I should have killed the protector because that was just getting too much value and if you look at his wellspring 17 is way too much health like if i don't draw a removal spell for that wellspring the you know the one i mulliganed away at the beginning of the game i'm gonna lose um so that's sad i really don't know what i was thinking i was kind of distracted this game um which is why it's lucky that i drew another scorched earth off the top <laughs> i knew guys i'm like I'm, I'm sitting here like, how am I going to beat that quick enough? And I'm like, oh, now I don't have to. I can play Swain this turn. I can kill his Wellspring, or Starspring, sorry. And then I can play another Leviathan next turn on my attack phase. And what does he do? He loses the game. So basically at this point, he has to have a very specific hand in order to win. He has to deal, he has to have the card that deals two to a self unit. And then heal two with a, a burst speed in order for him to win the game. 
um, unless he has like a bastion or a really convoluted hand otherwise. He has to have a way to deal self damage and then have a way to heal both at burst speed, which yes, he does have with takedown and um, guiding touch, but I haven't seen him play guiding touch yet. And I think he would have by now. So I'm going to assume that he, unless he drew it off the top, he's not going to have it. Now having a takedown, yes, he could have it. But if he did, he would have pulled the Leviathan with the 2 for this, or the 21 for, sorry, this turn. So the fact that he hasn't done that means it's very telling. It means he doesn't have either of those cards. And so here he's going to lose Star Spring. All right, so he's going to give her an extra health. I don't know why that matters at all. Um, Pale Cascade, I guess, for card draw still doesn't really matter. Taking Leviathan down to three is not going to matter because he has no way to deal over the top. Like, he literally has no way to deal over the top, guys. I feel like we're fine. So he has a huge board, but we're about to play Swain, and he's only going to have his 2-7. So, I feel like we're in a really good position. I doubt he has any way to win here. Um, this is just what the Swain deck wants to do. Get the Leviathan out and just keep Swain and Leviathan alive. And just keep stunning his stuff. And once we get the double Leviathan out, his entire board will be stunned at the start of the turn. And we can open attack for a great, easy win. Um, so, I don't feel like he has a way out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing what I do. And just literally play no cards for some reason. Um, I, actually, in this situation, I don't see a reason to do so. He doesn't have any... There's not enough of a reason to. We should have played them in the past, but the past is in the past, so... I do apologize for this next part, guys, because my audio cut out. I don't know what happened, but it just stopped recording the audio. And so, sadly enough, I don't have any of this audio saved. You just get to watch the game. And listen to my beautiful voice. So, we're going to play the Leviathan here. Um, he has Star Spring. And I feel like you can... Re as far as I'm aware, you can't replace um, landmarks with units. So, he's down to a 5-unit board. And, guys, by the way, I didn't realize this. It wouldn't have mattered because we he wasn't on the attacking turn. But the stun goes around the spell shield. That's really interesting. I didn't realize that before. Um, uh, I don't really know how that works i feel like it should pop the bubble but it doesn't in this case it's actually more annoying because i would rather have flexibility and i don't have that here because they still have spell shield and i didn't need them to be stunned this turn because i wasn't going to attack anyway well okay i technically i could have attacked with swain but i wasn't generally going to um or no i am going to attack with swain this turn no wait now I'm not because he has Jack the Winner, but I yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna go for the kill on the on the healing dude because we really don't want our opponent to gain any more life. Oh, and by doing Death Hand, we actually stun Jack the Winner, and he all he has is a three two. So he has to block Swain with the three two, and we get ten free damage, which means he's dead on the next turn. That seems pretty good, uh, especially with the Soraka Star Spring combo here going to be. Pretty powerful, especially with the healing. We just need to take this guy out before our opponent can heal him. And his hand is breaked out or something because he didn't play anything. I mean, two-card hands are kind of odd, although our two-card hand is pretty sick. So, I don't feel no reason not to attack here because he's going to block one with block swing no matter what. is stealing the most damage. And both overwhelms can get overwhelm damage after we've killed it during the combat. So, there's no reason to play Ravenous Falk before we attack so we're just gonna attack here and um unless i'm wrong we win um he has four mana we're dealing 10 and he's at two and we have six damage next turn i mean i could have submitted this and still won although guiding touch and things like that were the worry so killing it would just be the safe bet here um so we kill it we get in 10 damage and we win on the next combat and that's it for our opponent Playing Wellspring and all, or spell Star Spring, the most popular deck in the meta, and almost winning, and yet we just somehow managed to beat it. Wow, even had a Soraka switch at the end. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I sure did. And guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.